Earlier this year, some of our students did a sponsored sleep out. Let's see how they got on. The reason they came up with to do the homeless sleep out was because there's people, like, you've ever seen you're walking through town and stuff, like Castle Street for example, and you see people lying there, and they're in a bad way, and you feel, you feel a bit of pity for them. And there's also a person from, from our town, where I'm from, and uh, he used to be a footballer, like he was good at football, and he was just a handsome looking guy, and now uh, he's just, he drinks and he's homeless, and it's, it's mad the way can, things can just go so fast. My uncle was homeless, so he was homeless for a couple of months, and it made us realise that it was hard for him, and then he got he got um, back on his feet and got himself a wee house. And you know, it's hard for for them and still sleep you know, sleep rough in the street. What we done was we raised some money uh, so we could do a homeless sleep out in BMC car park to raise awareness for for homeless people. The reason why we did it is because we wanted to experience how the homeless slept um, rough on the street and it, was a good, it would be a good experience for us all. Well that was earlier on this year. Joining us now is Jerry Skelton, Social Work Lecturer from the Met, Declan Morris from the Simon Community and Grace Price, former service user. Declan, how important is it to raise awareness for homelessness? I, I think it's massively important to, to raise the issue of, of homelessness and, 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 and raise people's level of education and awareness about it. I suppose like many situations in society and situations that involve people and people who, who, who struggle with, with poverty or, 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 or things that happen within society that have a negative impact on their lives. It's important that we don't ignore that um, and as best as we possibly can, as I say, raise the level of education and awareness to as many people as possible about the issue of homelessness because sometimes and more often than not, it's an image that is not understood. Um, it's an image that perhaps uh, has created a stereotype over the years and it's important that we look at all the facts and look at all the figures surrounding homelessness not just in Belfast but Northern Ireland and, and, and wider afield. Mm -hmm. Yeah absolutely. How does the Simon community help? The Simon community helps in, in, in a number of different ways. Um, certainly historically the Simon community has has been known for its supported accommodation or, or hostel provision um, across Northern Ireland and that helps to, to support people who find themselves without a home and, and, and therefore require supported accommodation and support to find themselves a route back into society and, and back into independent living. Uh, but we offer support in many other different ways as well. Um, we can, a big move for us recently has been around homelessness prevention. So it's actually trying to prevent homelessness before it actually happens. So we have branched out and offered a variety of different services, in particular one that supports people in their own homes to sustain their life in the community that they live in. Uh, and prevent them from ending up in hostile life. Uh, we've made that easier for people to access through our 24 hour, seven day a week helpline um, that people can phone um, uh, for advice or support or if indeed they need support at home um, and we can put that in place. And as well as that, we have our, our own homeless prevention uh, program, uh, which looks at a variety of different initiatives that works collaboratively with local services to provide easier access to the supports that people might need who find themselves homeless or at risk of homelessness. Not least the likes of services that help with welfare advice and um, housing advice, uh, training and education employment opportunities um, like the Belfast Met and, and other issues like that. And Jerry, you've been running the Homeless Awareness Panel in Belfast Met since 2007, mm -hmm. annually during Homeless Awareness Week, and I believe you were shortlisted for an award. Congratulations on that. Thank you, Steve. What is your motivation and what have the events achieved? Motivation is driven out of a sense of passion about wanting to try. I have one agenda, Stephen. It's to change the world and make it a better place for all of us. So we start thinking about homelessness. If I was to ask the viewers to this programme, or you're indeed yourself, to maybe take out a bunch of keys that you have to your house or whatever it is, the most important key that we often take for granted is the key to a door that lets us into a home. And without our key to our door, home becomes something that impacts our identity. If we have no home, it's very hard then to start thinking about who we are as people. And yet we take this for granted all the time. A lot of us, my good colleague Declan, one of the best homeless prevention people in Northern Ireland, I have to say, uh, they had a campaign running and I think we're about three pay packets away from being homeless as I'd say it's probably one now in terms of the economic situation that we're in. So I like other people, Declan and Grace and others and yourself included, 
want to try and make a difference in people's lives, that maybe have a bit of a voice for those who are marginalised, isolated, excluded. And also my professional backgrounds lend themselves to that in terms of social work and youth work and things like that. I, I often argue, and I'm on record of saying that maybe the professions don't take homelessness as seriously as they should or they could. And that's one of the reasons I set up the panel in 2007, really to provoke originally the social work profession to try and take homelessness seriously and then widen that. I mean, we're in a studio here. One of my issues was around how we report homelessness, how we tend to feed the taboo, the stereotype, the prejudice that then flows from that. And if there's one message I want people to know from this is there are no homeless people. I know it might sound controversial. There are people who are homeless. What have the events achieved? Well, um, obviously, it's probably not for me to say, you know, but I'd like to think they've made a difference. Um, in ter they certainly helped shape the discourse around homelessness. Um, there's a, one of my colleagues would say, if you're ever on an event, here's the things you must never say when Jerry's around. <laughs> Homeless people, disabled people, alcoholic, all of those sort of things. We have to start with the human being, person first, never a label. So we've had some impact on the discourse. I'm really pleased to say that um, because of the campaigning, that, and thank you for mentioning the award, that was lovely. But what's more important to me is that Social Work Now, from 2016, have placed homelessness on the Social Work curriculum. So every Social Work student is going to have to address homelessness. And if we address it in the teaching, and in the education, and in their training, then that translates immediately into practice. So no Social Worker can say to me what was said before, what's homelessness got to do with the helping professions? And Jerry, what support do you feel is necessary for those who are homeless or find them themselves on the brink of being homeless? I suppose that we talk about um, organisations have a duty of care. I'd like people to start with a duty to care, so that would be really lovely. Um, homelessness itself, if we had more time we could talk about the definition. Part of my background is social work and anybody who's in the care system is homeless. We just don't call it homelessness, we call it in care, foster care, adoption, residential care, whatever that is. So we need to start with an understanding. Homelessness impacts anybody and can impact quite a lot of people. There's no respecter of gender, age, financial circumstances. Any of us, as I was saying earlier, could end up homeless because of a whole range of things. I'd love the media to be reporting it properly, ethically, doing it well, thoughtfully and feelingfully because we keep sort of feeding that whole media, that the myth around that the stereotype. Um, and that's one of the reasons I invite media, journalists, students, etc., etc., to come to the Homeless Awareness Panel, to let them hear what the story is, to let them hear from professionals like Declan, um, service users and former service users like Grace, people like myself who've been working in the homeless sector, to hear what's important, what matters, and how can we provide services that are sensitive in the first instance. We're also at a time now in terms of austerity, now, I think we confuse the word austerity with severity, and I think that's really what's happening. But in terms of that, so there's not an awful lot of public support, really, for people who are homeless. That becomes an issue. Our numbers are increasing, not because of the issue itself, but we have other issues, migration, terrorism, lots of things that feed into this. So we have loads of people now, and we need those services sensitive to it. But that makes a big demand on the public purse. And that's a whole issue for all of us in terms of, well, how do we prioritise that? over other things in a massively competing agenda. And Grace, how has events such as Jerry's Homeless Awareness Panel um, helped not only you but others? Well, I've found it's helped me because it's a number of years since I've been homeless and once I was homeless there wasn't as much support then of different organisations and there's a lot more now. Plus Jerry's events gives people like me a voice and let people out there know what people who have been homeless are homeless are just like anyone else are human beings and are just want to be treated like people and it's also a matter of people may be homeless but they've other problems as well and not just to pick and choose or who you can help or oh, that person's just homeless but then they could have other problems and they don't want to help them because of the other problems they have and it's too much for them to help them and not to segregate or one just do so, so much for people because they're homeless but if that person has uh, self-harm problems or drug pro problems on top of that or oh, don't want to help them because that's more of a problem yeah. it's just the same as a standard person there mm -hmm. and it's just the person has a voice and the person just needs help because nobody knows how it could happen to you any time mm -hmm. definitely this shine a light on a huge issue but thank you grace declan and jerry for thank joining you. us here today thank you, thank you. 
Don't forget, if you've been affected by any of the issues that we've just brought up, there is support out there, like the Simon community and our college website, if you ever find yourself on the brink of being homeless or are indeed homeless. <laughs>